In today's video, we're going to work from our collaged base of mostly jelly prints, which we then photocopied and we're turning it into a floral today. And full disclosure, we did trim the video down from just under an hour. So it does take a little bit to create a mixed media piece like this. All right, let's get started. Just going to sketch out a quick loose floral scene on here and work that up. So a combination of mixed media painting and probably adding some more collage. So I did a really super quick, loose little sketch here. I'm just gonna start again from my little reference here. I like this uh, little bit of tinted Liquitex gesso because it's got good coverage. I just added a little bit of um, quinacridone nickel azo gold to my bottle of Liquitex gesso which is a mid-coverage, mid-thickness gesso. Not the thinnest of the thin, but not the super heavy, which um, I love for my mixed media paintings, the Grumbacher gesso. This is very, very thick. I usually apply it with a palette knife. So I'm just gonna lay in some um, flower shapes or actually start by sort of carving out the background because right now it's very noisy and I need to see where I wanna go with my design. Probably the hardest part is covering over anything that you love and um, that has to be done or else you are just staring at a lot of confusing noise. Just gonna um, start defining where my flower shapes are gonna be. And you might say, well, shoot, you're covering everything up. Well, yes and no, because um, it's still going to show the interest underneath, and it got me started on putting something together. And it's kind of fun to see unexpected designs underneath the flowers that you're putting in. I squeezed out um, Liquitex Yellow Orange Azo. And I'm going to get my, really one of my faves, which is the Liquitex Vivid Red Orange. Have some green, we'll do Liquitex Green Gold and Golden Phthalo Blue. And some white. Might need some of that here too. All right, and we will start putting in some of the flower shapes. Um, it can be really loosey-goosey because uh, we can always define things more with either paper or painting over. I guess that's all I really need. I won't cover everything and there's interest under there that wouldn't be there if you didn't have the collage. So that's actually pretty fun. So there's some um, pods in here uh, gonna open up into lilies, I would guess. Let's see, let's get a little green in here behind that rose. Got white flowers up here. Um, what do I want to do for that red rose? Maybe we'll introduce a color that's not already in the collage papers, but that sort of goes along. This is a permanent violet dark, which has become very difficult to find. And we'll just uh, indicate a rose shape there in the dark. And I suppose add that color in here. 
since I was a watercolor painter um, before I went to mixed media acrylic, I really need to control my water. And that's why I always have towels handy to be aware of the secret to any water media is really knowing when to have a lot of water in your pigment for the looseness of it and when to have more pigment than water so that you are you can have control over the result and that's the secret looking somewhat like a rose there all right it's still quite noisy so i'm gonna need to calm that all down here let's go with a little uh, darker green here and of course I mean just I'm just showing you the infinite potential of working with your um, collage papers on a panel or a board or a canvas to create anything you want to create I mean basically uh, floral bird animal landscape still life figure um, abstract. It's pretty much endless. This is where we are so far. Definitely needs a bunch more definition. So I use charcoal to kind of redefine things a little bit. Focal point right here and try and calm down some of the rest of the piece. And then I'll go about um, adding some collage back in in these places and really want to brighten this up too. For now, I want to calm down part of this here just so I can be able to focus a little bit better on where I'm trying to go. We're just going to knock this back. And that was a Thalo Blue um, Liquitex Green Gold and some Quinacridone Burnt Orange. And again, as stated, because I'm uh, my background is as a watercolor painter. The term negative painting or painting around things is very familiar to me. It's certainly not your only option here. Because it's acrylic, you can really do anything you want. But I like that brighter green coming in. It's getting a little, uh, the mood of the color is getting a little bit dark for me. Add a little bit more of the green gold and brighten it up a little more spring springish okay and then we'll add some of this in here even though that's not really our color theme that just feels so much better to me and we'll introduce that again in some of these other places so that's got a little more um clarity to it and we'll bring out these flowers here I don't know what these are called. Not great about learning the names of things. I'm sure somebody out there knows what they are. And then let's just repeat that a little bit over here. All right. Come back in with more of our little berries here. And up here. Bring some light back into this rose here. Really trying not to be too fussy. I don't want to get trapped in too much representation. I mean, unless you're really brilliant at it, it can really take the fun out of it. And I really think we all need to be having a lot more fun and get a fabulous result, which is why I love jelly plate printing. And as you can see, there's very little left, almost nothing left of the uh, collage papers that we started with, but that's okay because we're going to bring some back in now. And this is how it's looking so far. Okay, I did pick out some collage papers to put on here, which I'm going to do now. And I'm going to try and knock the intensity back. So I'm using matte medium. I don't use a brush to apply because it's really hard on your brushes and it's hard to clean out. I wanted to introduce these stripes back in because I like it up here and I'm losing it. Also, I found this really fun collage that I printed on pink tissue paper and I'm putting that in. Um, this is some of the paper we printed the other day. kind of like this 
I like this one right here. I think I want to leave that. Let's see. I really do love these stripes in here. So get this down. Ideally, you wouldn't have pink paint on your um, mallet as you're smearing the matte medium around. It's not really going to make a big difference. All right, so let's calm this down because I can hardly see what I'm doing here because there's just too much uh, information. So we'll use a little bit of that tinted gesso and we'll just tone this all down, even that that we just added. Oh, maybe some of the phthalo blue. I forgot I was using that instead of the teal. Yep, got to give it a little better focus there. Afraid I'm going to have to cover that stripe, and I don't want to. Just do it really pale, and you'll still be able to see those stripes. Yep, that's good. I went in with that real dark, but it was too much. This is better. You can see what we're saying now. Gosh, I guess I just didn't like that dark either. So, I go nonverbal for a little while here while I strategize. Just really like that stripe behind there. I wish I had left that in more places. All right, so let's get more of this white flower, these white flowers in here. I think that's going to have to go right there. Have a little bit. I'm going to have to turn it around so I can see. Then I'll come back to the rose. Really want to be able to do the rose without it being um, fussy and too detailed, right? Let's use this watercolor brush to get a little more definition in there. That's not bad. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. Uh, let's introduce a little bit of the pink into these white flowers here. These actually have a little bit of stripes or speckles, I'm sorry, on them. Okay. We need more light green in here. About to stop it again and take and evaluate where we are. Um, certainly it looks better than it has, I think. That's set off nicely against that um, dark there. All right, let's quiet this down just a little bit more so we can focus on what we want to show the most. I like the blue better. That's not going in the direction I want. So let's come back to the blue. And of course, it's acrylic, so I can quickly lift it off. white in there. Guess that paper's got to go too. And we can carve out some of those white flowers right there. I think that's my favorite part now. All right, that's a good place to stop. There's more to do, but it's coming together. So I used a little chalk and oil pastel, 
and I tore up a little more paper to apply here. And then let's bring this home um, because I can feel myself getting too invested and a little too um, fussy maybe. I have torn paper. I do prefer tearing the paper rather than cutting it. And I really love this a stripe here, so I'm gonna add a little more stripe. I have this, which was clearly printed from a leaf, and it looks just like a leaf, so I'm gonna put that in right here. That one is not rice paper, but primarily what I'm using is either tissue paper or rice paper. And as you can see, um, this striped paper I did not make this striped paper. I got it in a gift at one time and I absolutely love it. And I'm just adding a little orange because it just feels right. All right, so now I've got the paper adhered. I can hold it up and show it to you. Ah, oh, it's pretty fun, I think. Let's see how little we can do to finish this off. I'm gonna negative paint a little bit more and add just a little bit of detail. My paint's all dry now because I was off doing something else. And it is good to give your piece a chance to dry in between because if you are painting wet into wet, it's going to get muddy and blurry and not optimal. So good to give yourself a little room in between. So as stated, how little can we do at this point and have it be enough. Bring a little more light in behind here. If anyone out there has the really good answer for overhead cameras, I'd love to hear from you. I just can't quite figure that out with my particular setup. Always open to improvement, right? I'm painting around these shapes again. My training as a watercolor painter has me doing that. It's really not necessary. You can, of course, paint on top but it gives some good effects. And I'm afraid I'm gonna have to lose that, but I'm just gonna glaze over it. I didn't want to, but it's distracting over here. We can just do a glaze over that. Should we do a green, a blue green? Just need to make that not so prominent there. Just add that again up here. Okay, that's looking good, happy with that. We'll add a little bit of that in here to give that sort of pod a little more definition and a little bit of white. That's working. I used a little charcoal on here, so I'm gonna try and carve those out without you seeing that black line there. These are white flowers. We'll leave it white at the top and bring a little shadow in. These actually have some spots on them. So give that a second to dry. Okay. Let's give an indication of that right there. Might need to cover that. So we need just a little bit of attention on the rows. Again, I just, I don't want to get fussy here because uh, a rose, you could spend, you could spend a long time doing a rose. And this is just supposed to be fun and quick. So we're just giving the indication here. And we'll add just some of the quinacridone magenta and some phthalo blue. Just guide your eye around it a little bit. Okay, and while we've got that shadow color, a little bit of shadow, we'll draw a little shadow down into these white blooms. I don't want to do too much there because I want to get them, um, want to get the spots on them. Let's get a little different color there. I want, want a little more of a gray, a living gray shadow. All right. All right. Um, let's see. I think I want to interrupt that. Show that little stem there, maybe some indication of leaves. Got to bring a little more detail into these yellow flowers before we run out of time. And these funny little seed pod things. Let's see. Let's get these flowers in. 
and then we'll sign it, right? And we'll be all done. And this is your floral version of the collage paper project. This one got a little complicated, I would say, but the next one we'll do will be simpler. Let's see. All right, let me just sign it. And um, we'll be all done for today. Just put a little bit more definition right there so you know where to look. And there it is. All right, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.